hello folks uh thank you very much for coming thanks for the uh patronage and and all the things that you're doing to help with uh, truth guardians really really appreciate it uh today i have father mark back uh and i'm gonna i'm gonna try to pick his brain uh about some of the things that have been that i've been pursuing uh i i believe it's a calling from god uh to understand a little bit about what's happening in our world and why it's so hard to find the truth uh and that's why i'm launching you know truth guardians which uh, uh some of you have already seen a lot of our videos and a lot of them have been with father mark um and and here's the here's the dilemma that i have there are seemingly so few things that people can agree upon that they believe are the truth and we're losing the ability to have a discussion around common beliefs and one of the things that i wanted to ask uh, father mark is where does god fit into all this because you 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 all understand that i believe that the truth uh resonates from the creator uh because god created all of the world and everything in it so it has to come from god but i wanted to get i wanted to get a perspective uh from somebody who who has a lot more theological training than i do so that's why i brought father mark back so father mark thank you very much uh i appreciate you coming back here this is going to be on the fly so uh you know we're just going to see where this all goes uh and mm -hmm. the first question that i have is uh can can people who do not believe in God, can they find the truth? Okay, are we going to be able to, me as a believer and somebody who, who is a, a, a non-believer, can we find the truth together? Or is there a necessity to have God in the mix or at least an understanding of, of a creator who created us and the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Small, a small question for you today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Dad. No, it's a good question. Why and why not talk about it? Uh, I mean, I agree with everything you said as far as that God is the source of all truth. God is the truth. Everything that exists other than God exists because of God, and it is the light of His mind that has infused everything with the ability to comprehend it in the first place. Uh, that our seeking the truth is a conversation with God. Uh, no, no matter what it is, if we're trying to find the truth, we are, in fact, responding to him who made things knowable in the first place based on him knowing them perfectly and fully in in a way that is beyond this, we, how we can conceive in its simplicity. So uh, I think it's impossible for, for anyone who has the gift of faith to understand truth in any sense other than that that said we can indeed pursue the quest for truth i think with those who wouldn't necessarily share any or all of the assumptions that you and i have in common uh, because humans communicate human beings communicate with each other in such a way that we use language that does to some extent connect with reality I mean, our mind and the way we express ourselves connects with reality and and to, to try to purify that by discourse and argument you can do that with anybody and it does it does get you closer to the truth and gets you closer hopefully ultimately to a common understanding of the truth even with someone who wouldn't even say that he or she believed in god uh, you're not going to get to the ultimate truth that way but you can get somewhere uh, i think am i making sense here yeah yeah i think so and and i think some of it is that because we have a common uh understanding of a lot of the stories in the bible and a lot of our culture is built you know in a, in a judeo a christian society like the united states a lot of the same stories and a lot of the, the the parables and the golden rule and all of that stuff comes from the bible um mm -hmm. so i think i think that there's a common understanding even if somebody doesn't believe that that the bible is the inspired word of god there's still a lot of truth in it and i think a lot of people who might not be believers believe you know the things that are in the bible mm -hmm. uh you mean that as far as morals that yeah, we have a yeah. yeah the moral yeah. aspect of the stories i think you know and i think we've used that in a, in our education systems in the way we raise kids and and all that stuff so i think there is a common 
a common knowledge base, let's say, of the stories and the morals that are that are given to us by the Bible. Um, so mm -hmm. I think I think that's true. I, I agree with you, but I think that if if I might, I mean, I think that is a little bit of a two-edged sword. Okay. Because on the one hand, you're right. I mean, we have we have a common um, moral vocabulary to a fairly great extent, of a common understanding of the basics of morality, and then also really of what a human being ought to strive for as far as generosity, humility, nobility, what, what makes a person right. good, we tend to have a common understanding of, even with people who would not concede the truths about Jesus Christ that we would say, like the theological truths. The right. pro but the, So that's good on one hand. On the other hand, I think the problem is that that produces a little bit of a false sense of common ground where where there's an there there the culture assumes the truth of the christian faith to a certain extent that if you then remove the christian faith from it the whole thing tends to kind of fall apart i mean you don't and you don't and 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 the people involved don't even really know how much they took for granted the christian truth in the first place so it actually is harder. It's actually harder to have a reasonable conversation under those circumstances, if, if I'm making sense there. Yeah, that's a great point. Do you think that that's what's happening now? That, uh, that we've that there are so many people that are trying to trying to take the moral learnings that we've had through the Bible and then get rid of the and get rid of the Jesus and God part about it. And that and maybe that's the reason why we can't find truth right now. Do you think that has to do with it? I think I think it has a it's a huge part of the problem. To be perfectly honest with you, I mean because I mean if you really if if you really think about it, the Christian morals are sitting on top of other things we believe that 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 they have to be sitting on top of to make sense, right? I mean, that's if you good, if you, that's a good it, analogy, and so like you look at the crucified like, Christ. And without the faith that he is the savior, that he is the incarnate son of God, then his self-sacrifice does not look beautiful, right? It just looks tragic. Right. Uh, and a, as if something had been lost that, that didn't need to be. But when you, when you conceive of the crucified Christ as the son of God and the savior, and then you lay on top of that, well, I want to imitate him. I want to be like him. I want to give generously of myself, even unto death, for the sake of the kingdom of God. Right? All all those things that then you say, well, okay, so therefore, in this circumstance, under I'm gonna I'm gonna act this way. I'm gonna have this moral code that I'm gonna live by because I believe all those things, and the, and that I even believe that there's a heaven, that there is a kingdom of God. Right? Right. If, if I if I don't believe that there's a kingdom of God, then I can't I can't sustain generosity and for very long uh, I, I mean because I, the, my motivation for it is gone and so uh, i mean i think that's the crisis that we have now is that there's these noble aspirations as a christian society that we have but there's also a huge amount of self-centeredness and morals really proceeding solely from it's all about me which in a christian context doesn't make any sense right, right? Um, and you, you kind of got to go back to square one to get on the same page again. I'm sorry. Go go ahead. No, no, no. Um, yeah, that that makes perfect sense. Do you think that there is? Um, do you think there's a concerted effort to knock out that foundation underneath the moral teachings in the United States? I mean, is this a conscious effort? from people to remove Christ and then try to create whatever morals exist without um, the church and without the belief in, in Jesus Christ and the resurrection? Uh, I, I think there's there... something that people are, I guess the other, I guess the other, the, 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 the other side of that coin would be, it's just happening naturally that, that people are not as religious or spiritual as they used to be. And the underpinnings are just being washed away uh, without any real intent, or do you think there's an intent here? Right. No, th those are really a that's a series of really good questions. I mean, if I could, let me say two things. One, I mean, I think there are there are self-interested motives in a lot of instances that 
a willfulness, uh, you know, the, 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 the Christian disposition towards reality is that God is giving me everything that, that, that is coming my way. And my role is to receive it and to cooperate with him. And I'm a servant in a much bigger picture. Right. And, and when, when we conceive of reality that way, then, then, then the 10 commandments are, make sense. And what, what flows from them makes sense. And, and I see that that's actually what's best for me. I'm going to be happy if I see myself in this role in the universe Right. If I lose sight of that and I, I want what I want, uh, you know, uh, that I want, and a lot of it has to do with sexual morality. I mean, we might as well just face that. I mean, it really does ultimately, I think, come down to that in, in many, many cases that there's this whole conception. The whole thing is if I want what I want sexually and I'm going to reorganize everything to justify my having it, then ultimately the, the foundation of it all is going to go out the window. Well, I have to get rid of it. I right. have to get rid of it. I can't. I. I don't know whether the it's it's maybe a reduction of guilt if I don't have to worry about you know the underpinnings and the you know the Ten Commandments and everything else. Then I can pretty much do whatever I want. I mean, there's no. Exactly. And if there, um, I had this conversation with uh with the person uh, during a Bible study who's an atheist. He's a, he's a, the only atheist in our group, and it was a question of the importance of heaven and hell mm -hmm. um, and he didn't see the importance of it and i'm sitting there going okay folks if you remove if you remove jet you, you assume that that um that there was a person named jesus christ okay whether he was a whether he was a prophet or a teacher or he was resurrected or whatever if you get to the point where you go okay so we've got these ten commandments but we don't have we don't have the uh, potential of salvation in heaven or the punishment in hell, then what does what does the world look like? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're speaking to. I, I mean, at a very, very broad level. But it, is, that, is that a fair statement that you sit there and you go, okay, you start taking heaven and hell away, then then what's the point? I mean, there's there's mm -hmm. only there's only human punishment and retribution. You don't have to worry about because there is no soul. I mean, if there is no heaven and hell, why do you have a soul? Right. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I think those points are, are really well made. But but then you I mean, I think you can turn the whole thing on its head when you're dealing with an atheist, because the fact of the matter is, if, if he was if, if, if the atheist was going to go to a pure unchristian place. Right. Where right. As Christianity just had never entered into the world. I mean, then then he he or she would wind up in the world of the ancient Greek philosophers and Aristotle, and at least there'd be some openness to the question of maybe maybe reason and reflection does teach us that we that we do have immortal souls. Right, right. But it's that, you know that because it's actually much more reasonable to think that we do than that we don't, and that there would that there is some kind of reward and punishment after this life. We don't. I mean. The Lord Jesus came into the world and revealed a lot more to us about that than we knew before. But honest people before recognized that it was more reasonable to think in terms of some kind of immortal soul than than not to. Am I making sense here? Yeah, but but you still get to the point where you go, okay. So if um, I, I'll just give you a personal example. So I'm I'm sitting in my office. I'm thinking about doing something that I shouldn't be doing because I know it's against the the Ten Commandments. Okay, if nobody's ever going to know about it, why not just do it? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but but I have a belief, um, you know, through teaching, um, you know, with the church that there's always somebody watching. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's always a judge. Mm -hmm. And that's why when people say, well, you can create a moral culture without God or or in our we'll come back to truth because, you know, that's where I wanted to head. You know, mm -hmm. I can find the truth without without God because the truth is self-evident or whatever else they want to say. I have a hard time getting past the fact that that unless there's a final judgment. And you don't get caught by other human beings. So therefore there's no punishment or anything else. What's the point? You mm -hmm. do whatever you want to do. 
you know, mm -hmm. whatever feels good, that's what you're going to do. You want to do this, go, go for it. Because it, without anybody else knowing there's, there's no reason to have any, any, um, uh, uh, definitive morality because of the fact that the only ones you have to satisfy are other people that might see what you're doing or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can, uh, can I, I think your insight there is really good. Can, can I throw one thing in there though that, yeah. I, that I haven't did, that came into my mind earlier when we were talking about the problems that arise from presuming Christian principles in moral conversation without acknowledging that they're there. Right. right. And, and that, um, and that we and we were talking about how the Ten Commandments guides us and keeps us, uh, uh, which comes from this sense that I exist to serve God and and to reach a goal that is eternal and and that God knows, uh, and that I'm a servant of a plan of God's. Uh, that I mean, what, the, what what brought it back to my mind was the idea of you you or me sitting alone and contemplating doing something evil that, that at least as far as we could tell wouldn't affect anybody else and that nobody else would know about it. Sure. Right. And so why, what, what would keep me from doing it other than knowing, believing that God and the angels are watching and that I will be judged for what I do. Right. And I, I, I agree with all of that, but, but, but the, I think part of the problem that we have now has to do with, that back right around the time you know, and shortly before the United States was founded, there, there was what they call the Enlightenment mm -hmm. and there, the, a, an idea of God different from the Christian idea of God as a more remote um, mm -hmm. uh, organizer of the universe, right. but not involved in a way right. that, that you couldn't even say he, he has a heart uh, in any sense. Right. And that, uh, what what that has done to the 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 individual human being's sense of him or herself is i think an extremely profound and damaging thing right because because the who if i do something evil even by myself who do i hurt i hurt myself right i, I mean the, right. It, like like god 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 is not just someone who is a calculator of things i mean god is is my father who made me to be good, and and, and if I right. if I do evil, even if it doesn't affect anybody else, it, it always does in some way that we never sure. really right do. right right. But really doing is I'm doing myself wrong. I'm dragging myself down, and I know that I know that I am because because I have because I have a loving father who made me for something better than that. Right. Am I making right. sense here? Yep. 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 Now let me let me ask you a question about your bringing the enlightenment into it. Um, mm -hmm. I always thought that, and and this is this is from a very ignorant place. So I mean, if it if it sounds too simplified or whatever, I always thought that the enlightenment, and and by the enlightenment I mean that somebody somebody decided that there was something in the world uh, called the scientific scientific method. And that there was a way to figure out the world and that the world worked as a kind of a clockwork thing. And there were certain laws, law of gravity and, you know, um, uh, motion and inertia and all these other things. And and the Enlightenment basically was was set up in a way um, in history to kind of to kind of take the place of God. OK, that we mm -hmm. are because we're finding out all this all this science stuff. That we didn't really need God as much, or we moved God to kind of like what you were saying, like the clockwork God. You know, God set up all these these laws, and then He just kind of walked away and said, "Okay, I don't care about any any of the things that I created. They're just going to do whatever they're going to do. I gave them free will, and I gave them gravity, and I gave them the planets, and all this other stuff. And then He didn't care anymore. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's not what we believe. Uh, you and I, as Catholics, we believe in a personal God, but Am I correct in assuming that the Enlightenment was kind of used as a way to take away some of the underpinnings of Christianity and and Judaism probably also? Is that is hmm. that a is that a, a fair assumption or am I just misreading history? Because no, I never I think... understood that you got you got to either believe in science or you believe in God. You can't believe in both. Right. Sure. Yeah. No. I. Th I that's a really good question, and I wish I were more knowledgeable to give you a more knowledgeable answer. But. But I know enough to say. I mean, what. What you're. 
what you're talking about is very much a real phenomenon. I mean, it, it did in fact occur, and and what to, 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 in the sense that the, the 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 mentality that still is very prevalent that it is ignorant to accept what is taught in the Bible on face value as being the truth. Right? That that is something I that prove is, it. I can't prove it. So you know, why well, should I? Well, believe it? Because I believe in science, and you know, if I can't see it and touch it, and then it doesn't exist. Right. Well, and that it's and that it, that it is that that the the these holy scriptures are the remnants of an of a, of more ignorant ages. Right. I mean, that, that's an idea that yeah. became very prevalent, and that yeah, and that we that we now knew better than they that now know better than they knew then, and right. we have to read interpret what it says and and pull this part out that we think suits us now and throw away the stuff that we think doesn't suit us anymore right, right. and that became a, a pastime for people for centuries including you know, numerous well-intentioned and, and very intelligent men did it thomas jefferson himself did it and mm -hmm. he extricated parts of the gospel that he thought were suitable for him as an enlightened human being to, right. to yeah. take part and threw the rest of it away as myths that he did that were right. beneath his notice mm -hmm. and and but i mean the irony of all of that is is that with with all this meddling i mean there, there's it's not to say that the scientific method is somehow a problem i mean that would be an absurd thing to say because i mean right. here, here we are I mean, we're talking to each other, even though we're separated by a distance of 60 some miles, other people are going to be able to listen to this all because of the scientific method. It's right. so it'd be important right. for us to see that it's right. terrible. But, but, but the idea that it's been purely good is, is also absurd. I mean, in the name of science, the scientific theories that people thought were solid, incredible evil has been done. People have been killed and, so uh, you know the humility about how enlightened the enlightenment really was i, I think we, we you know at this point the human race needs to have that right. am i making sense yeah 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 and the thing that always got me it always became an either or you know it was it was either you believe in the enlightenment and or or you believe in god you know and and you can't it's an and conversation with me you know so right. i mean I think that the more science that we understand, the more acknowledgement we're going to find. And that's that's really what's been happening over the last decade or 15 years. The more science that we understand, the better we understand the creation and better understand that that uh, somebody built all this stuff. I mean, there's there, you know, and and, and they're trying to figure out and, and I think some of them are trying to to prove the science uh, to create so, create a, a scientific discovery that that um, gets rid of God, and I don't think that's going to happen. I think that what they're going to find is you're going to find it's more and more likely, it's more and more obvious uh, that there was a creator, and uh, you know, it's it's just going to move in that direction. So, well, here's another perfect example. I mean, day after tomorrow is the 48th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, right? And right. Yeah. what 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 has science done? to to that whole discussion science has demonstrated that roe v wade was simply based on antiquated ideas right. Right. about the generation of a human being yep. uh, and it's just scientifically incorrect the whole yep. line of thinking behind it it's science that has shown that it's that it's wrong right. not, right. not great, example. great example and very timely thank you for that Okay, so let me let me end the conversation with a with a question about truth. Okay, so do you agree with me that there is a a objective and absolute truth for almost everything that we're talking about these days? Sometimes it is very elusive. And a lot of the conversation is related to a belief that I found the truth and I'm holding it in my hand. And the other person saying, no, that's not it. I found the truth and I'm mm -hmm. holding it in my hand. Mm -hmm. But do you agree that there is a an absolute and objective truth for most things that we're, we're seeking these days? Okay, I appreciate I'm, thinking, 
And I'm not saying, and, and this is very, very difficult to understand. So I'm going to say it one more time in a different way. Please. You and I are having a conversation about whatever topic it turns out to be. Okay. Somewhere hidden in the in the discussion and the words that we're using and the, the perspective that we have from wherever we grew up or how we were raised or all that, there is a truth out there. Okay. And if both of us are working towards the finding of that truth, we will land in the same place. There is an objective and absolute truth out there. Okay. As opposed to you saying, no, my truth is this and your truth is that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so and I don't know whether I even asked the question correctly. I'm just going to leave it there and say, you take it and then make it better than what I asked it. Because that's what you're here for. You do that very, very well. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. I'm not sure that's true. But uh, speaking of what is true and what isn't, God is truth, right? And neither you nor I are God. So, and and the the only way, why would we talk? Why would human beings talk to each other at all if we didn't acknowledge to some extent that we do not have our own personal truth we're, we're seeking something else we, we're not god we don't have a lock on it it's not and so we need we need to seek it and and we we can't seek it without talking to other human beings about it and and seeking to learn something about it uh, recognizing our own ignorance and uh, seeking instruction enlightenment and clarification all those things and all of that presumes that somewhere outside of me is the truth that, that it's not in me it's not thank my own thing right? i mean thank you <laughs> that's the only thing i wanted you to say within the 30 minutes that we're talking <laughs> because because that's kind of the that's kind of the cornerstone for a lot of the work that i'm trying to do is mm -hmm. that is that the no matter what i've heard from this side or that side um, we, if we, if we both try to find it, we should be moving towards that truth. And, and, and I think there are certain times where you're not going to find it because like mm -hmm. you said, we're not God, but we need right. to, we need to be working together in a cooperative way to try to find it rather than me saying, okay, I already know it. All I'm, all I'm trying to do is convince you that I'm right. Um, but I'm, I'm so glad that you said it's not within us. It, it is outside us. And and a lot of times in in my mind, prayer brings it to me. OK, mm -hmm. now I can do all the research and I can talk to all the different experts and try to figure it out. But sometimes I just have to sit in a quiet place and say, OK, what is the truth? Um, and I don't I don't always get it, but I always move closer towards it. I always feel like I'm on the on the path towards it if that makes sense mm -hmm, of course sure praise god right yeah and we believe in the holy spirit and and the right. the gift of the holy spirit and the which you know and i think this is, i don't want to belabor too many different things get it but but what do the gifts of the holy spirit give us they they give us clarity about the type of things that that you're saying that they don't give us some kind of secret knowledge that I own, right? They, they give us an orientation of our minds towards the truth as, as it does in fact exist, which right. is the fruit of the work of God, not, not me. Right. And that, right. Exactly. So. Very well said. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. You gave me exactly what I wanted. Thousands and thousands of people that, you know, if we if we if we just work together, we can actually have some pretty good conversations and move together um, because I'm really, really frustrated by the fact that, you know, there are people that I used to be able to have conversations with and I can't anymore because they're sitting there and going, I already know what the truth is, Dale. And if you're not going to agree with me, I don't want to have a conversation with you. You know, and that's right. and that's sad. That's that you know, we're doing we're doing that to ourselves <clears throat> and social media doesn't help and there's a whole bunch of reasons which we'll go over in the in the future. Um right. but thank you very much. Um uh, 
you and I'll talk to see where this goes next because I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of fruit on the on the trees that we can we can harvest and and try to help people understand how to how to do some of these things to be able to get closer together and at least you know I, I'm not even my goal is not necessarily to find the truth it's 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 the it's the process of working with other people to move in a direction towards a, a, a better way of living. Um, and I agree with you. I, I don't think it happens without without God, but we do have to make the we do have to make the um, the the attempt to be able to talk to people who are not believers that there's a truth out there, and um, we can pursue it together. Okay, mm-hmm. I guess that's the best way of. Of, of saying what the goal is so mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh. right all Very right good. 